Hey guys, so I'm here, I'm at Auckland Airport, ready to leave New Zealand. Um, I'm a little sad, I just said goodbye to my parents and everybody else around here, so. Heading back to the UK, I've had an awesome time here. So good, so needed. <laughs> um, I've just been exploring, getting back into nature, gone on adventures with my mates and with my family um, and just yeah just resting recuperating and uh, yeah realigning with myself and what's next so yeah um, uh, mixed feelings obviously sad to be leaving but excited for uh, the potential of what can come um, once I get back to England. So, more on that. Take two. <laughs> Let's cut to it. I'm here to answer your questions before I uh, have to put on a mask and uh, fly my way across the world. Um, so, I have so much footage from my time here that I'm just gonna have to <laughs> sit down with over the next month or so and figure out how to best uh, how to best show you guys around New Zealand. Um, but in the meantime, I'm here to answer your questions, and I was overwhelmed reading the beautiful messages of support, people being stoked that I'm back on the YouTube. Um, really cool to hear from all you guys and to know that you're still there as well hanging in there and um yeah i, I kind of <laughs> forgot about uh this cool little community on youtube and people from all across the globe which is amazing so i'm going to attempt to quick fire it's never quick fire but i'm going to try and answer some questions here um and yeah let's find some good ones What's your favorite fruit right now? Mine's mango, they say. Um, Pedro, my favorite fruit is quite often a mango. If you've seen any of my other videos, you might have seen me devouring a sweet, juicy mango on a sunny day. I don't think, I don't think that can be beaten. But I haven't had a good mango in a while. So, right now, I mean, the trusty banana, it's always, it's always up there, but Persimmon, uh, sometimes known as khaki, I think as well. Beautiful fruit. Um, depends at what time you eat them. You don't. I don't want. I don't like them too soft, but um, not too hard either. There's like this perfect in between. They're like orange, a bit like apple. Not really anything like apple, actually. Scratch that. But kind of the shape of an apple, really. Um, and they just melt in your mouth. Tastes like candy so good so that's probably my favorite fruit and dates always dates um that's an awesome shirt thank you thank you milo no mlo um <laughs> i got that shirt for three quid at a charity shop so i was pretty stoked with it too do you keep in contact with matt from become elite how many people from italy england have you stayed in contact with that you've met through football um but no, I'm not in close contact with Matt, but occasionally we'll send him a message just to, just to check in, or if he does something cool, post a, post a neat vid, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just drop by, show him my support, um, and yeah, sometimes I still watch his videos and get some, get some ideas for uh, training as well, might be tapping into that as a resource soon, so um, yeah, really thankful for that connection from Matt, and uh, People in Italy and England, yeah, again, not super close contact with a lot of people, but there are quite a few that I will regularly uh, message just to show my support and what they're doing and, um, yeah, just cheer them on from afar, really. But, yeah, it's hard. You meet so many awesome people and it's really hard to 
keep those relationships going when you're in different areas uh, and the language barrier and everything but no, I think uh, yeah always happy to hear from them and to, to send them a message occasionally mm -hmm. ah, this one they've pretty much nailed I'm glad you're able to get home get some time to recharge it's just as important as figuring out the next step as always, I admire your honesty. Ah, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, thank you, CMB. <laughs> anyway, the question. What was the experience of playing football in England during COVID like? I can only imagine how strange and lonely it must have been at times. Is there anything new you started doing or learned during lockdown that you're carrying on into life going forward? Um, awesome question. And you basically nailed it. Yeah, it was strange and it was incredibly lonely at times. Um, we were such a tight-knit group of players, one of the best team environments I've ever been in, and we weren't allowed to spend time together socially. And for me particularly, I got so much interaction from people in the streets, just walking by, saying hello, catching up with random strangers who eventually become acquaintances and sometimes friends. And within a couple of weeks, that all just disappeared. You know, everybody went back into their own little family bubbles. And for us over in the UK without family, it was tough. It was really tough. Um, and having been away for home, from home for so long as well, it, I struggled, I really struggled. Um, thankfully, I had a really supportive partner, Phil, um, who also didn't have any family in the UK. So we, we were able to bubble up and support each other. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really difficult. And I'm not sure there was anyone who didn't find it difficult. Um, for us in particular, we were actually the lucky ones because we still got to train and play football. <laughs> Whereas so many people, they, they had nothing. They couldn't do anything, no school, no training. Um, you could only even walk with one person, you know? Um, so yeah, it, w it was a struggle, but uh, the, the team at Lewis really helped pull me through. They were <laughs> really special, a really special group of players and people at the club were doing their best to, to keep us, yeah to look after us but it, it was difficult because everybody had so much to focus on that there was a lot that got lost along the way so yeah <laughs> you basically nailed it strange and lonely <laughs> um what is one milestone you want to achieve in your career uh that would be playing at a world cup and in particular the 2023 world cup new zealand and australia um yeah, I've been, I've been trying to do that for a while now and it's just never really aligned. And I think um, I want to put everything into making sure that that aligns. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't you think that playing in the Olympics will further your career? Yeah, yeah, it probably, it probably definitely would have. But I think you've seen from the likes of Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka, <laughs> by no means saying I'm on their level at all. But um, after the year in England, I realized that I, more than anything, just needed to be home just to restore and re-energize and <laughs> just reconnect with my family and this whenua, this land over here, because Otherwise, I'm just gonna continue to burn out in the future. And although the Olympics was a dream of mine since I was a child, um, yeah, the, the, the way that the world has, has turned <laughs> this year, I think, uh, I don't think I would have enjoyed it nearly as much as, um, as I have my time at home. So I prioritize that, it wasn't an easy decision, but, um, but I'm thankful and I'm grateful that I did because I think it was the good choice. Um, thought about taking up other sports. How's the ankle? Our skate park's open. Everything's open in NZ, dude. <laughs> um, 
Ankles are alright, I need to keep maintaining them. Any kids out there or anybody playing sport, like, look after your ankles. I wish I got that advice when I was younger. Maybe I did, maybe I ignored it, but uh, yeah. yeah, I really wish I put more focus on my ankles when I was younger. Um, thought about taking up other sports. I did a long time ago, uh, quite often, especially during Olympic time. I thought about hockey, I thought about sevens. Um, yeah, mainly just those two. But uh, football always, always pulled me back. Um, and here we are. Dream career 20 years from now. Uh, <laughs> depends what the state of the world is, really. But I got a few ideas cooking. We'll have to see what unfolds. I don't want to let it all out right now, you know. See how the next couple of years go. Book recommendations. Uh, so... I should probably just check my flight. Um, one moment, I'm really good at missing flights. I'm just gonna check that I haven't. <laughs> okay, I'm boarding in 10 minutes, so I'm gonna have to skedaddle, but let's make this a part two-er, two-parter. One part two, yeah, two-parter. Um, that's part one, and uh, I'll come back to you guys at some point with uh, part two. So, <laughs> So stay tuned and uh, any extra questions, chuck them below, can't promise I'll answer them that take longer than I realize when I talk. I don't know how interested you guys are. Most of you probably tuned out already, but anyway, here we are. I gotta go board a plane. Um, see you on the other side of the world or maybe halfway across it. I'm going to Singapore. Bye.